Oberleutnant Herbert Schmidt is a bit of an enigma. Even his correct name has been debated by historians. But one thing is unanimously agreed upon. On Sunday, the 9th of May, 1943, Schmidt, at the controls of a Junkers Ju-88 aircraft, was on a secret mission of his own design. His mission was to defect to Britain, in the process turning over to the Allies a radar-equipped night fighter version of the Ju-88, which would lead to dramatic results for the RAF bombing campaign against Germany. It appeared that Schmidt and his crew lacked the killer instinct of many in their squadron, Nacht Jagdgeschwader III, a special night fighter unit. Schmidt hadn't downed a single Allied aircraft in combat during the war. In fact, it has long been suspected that Schmidt had been recruited as a British agent years before, though unravelling fact from various spurious and manufactured claims and incidents is difficult. The reason given for Schmidt's defection was an order he received to intercept and shoot down an unarmed courier flight. During the war, the British National Airline, BOAC, used unarmed and civilian mark de Havilland mosquitoes to ferry high-value cargoes and people between Scotland and neutral Stockholm in Sweden. I've made a film about this, so please see the link in the description box for more information. The Germans were determined to stop these mosquitoes, and stationed Junkers 88 night fighters along the route in an effort to get them. For Oberleutnant Schmidt and his trusted radio operator air gunner Oberfeldwebel Paul Rosenberger, it was the final straw leading to the decision to defect. However, it has also been suggested that the defection may have been agreed in advance with Schmidt's British handlers because of the high intelligence value the latest type of German night fighter to the British, desperate to prevent the loss of Lancaster bombers on massive air raids over Germany. Either way, Schmidt's plan swung into action on the night of the 9th of May 1943. Taking off from a German airbase at Aalborg in Denmark at 1650 hours for the Mosquito interception mission over the Skagerrak, the seaway between Denmark and Norway, Schmidt's third crew member, the flight engineer Oberfeldwebel Erik Kantvill, was not in on the plan. Rosenberger pulled a gun on him to keep him quiet from the defection. Shortly after, at 1710, Rosenberger sent a bogus message to night fighter headquarters at Grover, Denmark. He reported that the Junkers 88 starboard engine was on fire. Schmidt dropped the aircraft down to sea level, disappearing from German radar screens, and then three life rafts were dropped into the sea. All going well, the German search and rescue effort would assume that the aircraft had crashed into the sea and the crew had drowned. Schmidt now set course for Scotland. Accounts vary over what happened next. On reaching the Scottish coast, he passed over Peterhead and began circling, knowing this would attract British defensive fighters, as he was plotted on the radar at Hillhead. Two Spitfire 5Bs of number 165 Ceylon Squadron scrambled from RAF Dice to intercept the German. An American serving in the RAF, Flight Lieutenant Art Roscoe, led his wingman, Sergeant Ben Skamen, finding the Ju-88 at 1805 hours, 13 miles northwest of the city of Aberdeen. Roscoe moved in to investigate the circling Ju-88. Schmidt dropped his undercarriage while Rosenberger fired flares. Schmidt also waggled his wings vigorously. Roscoe held his fire. It was obvious the German was surrendering. Roscoe placed his Spitfire ahead of the Ju-88, while Sergeant Skamen took position behind. Schmid raised his undercarriage and followed Roscoe to his base, and landed safely. Afterwards, Schmidt presented Roscoe with his life jacket as a souvenir, and Roscoe wore the Luftwaffe kit on operations till the end of the war. It was sold in 2012. RAF police surrounded the German aircraft, and Schmid and his crew were held overnight in the base sickbay. The Ju-88 was flown to the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough, escorted by bow fighters. Given RAF markings and a serial number, it was thoroughly tested, making 83 flights in British hands. Schmidt's plane was fitted with the FUG-202 Liechtenstein radar used to intercept Allied bombers, a state-of-the-art piece of kit and top secret for the Germans. The gun technology was also a gift. The British were able to perfect a countermeasure to the German radar, rendering it effectively useless. 
The secrets revealed by Schmidt's aircraft were extremely significant to the Allied war effort, and more information would be gathered later from another Ju-88 that turned up quite unexpectedly in eastern England. Fourteen months after Schmidt's defection, a Junkers Ju-88G1 night fighter became irretrievably lost on a sortie over England. At 0425 hours on the 13th of July 1944, the aircraft, the pilot thinking he was safely back over Germany, made a landing at an emergency airfield at Woodbridge in Suffolk on England's east coast. The Ju-88 was almost out of fuel. As RAF ground crew guided the plane, they noticed its German markings and prepared to take the crew prisoner. On coming to a stop, the pilot shouted down at the ground crew in German, inquiring about fuel. In reply, an RAF sergeant shouted back that they were prisoners and had better come out with their hands up. The Germans started burning confidential papers, so Sergeant Kenneth Clifton opened a hatch but a German fell on him. Clifton punched the German in the face in the ensuing struggle, and the other two crewmen meekly surrendered. This Ju-88 provided another gold mine of intelligence and was exhaustively studied, helping Bomber Command overcome the night fighter menace. Oberleutnant Schmid's Ju-88 still exists today. It can be seen back in Luftwaffe colours at the RAF Museum at Cosford. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.